Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway, our main man when it comes to recruiting, and he's here to give a little insight on one of the newest Wildcats. This one, addition from the transfer portal uh, that came in just before signing day. Now, signing day, really not as important to the portal spear, but this is a notable get for K-State because they add another man to their defensive backfield, which is important because obviously they lost a guy like Kobe Savage and they had some other guys that are, and Will Lee has moved on. So Jordan Riley Scott comes from Ball State. And what is the book on him? What, what should we expect uh, for him joining K-State secondary? So with Jordan Riley Scott, you're kind of getting a guy a little similar to uh, Strap Thomas in the sense that they will punish you if you come over the middle. Uh, Jordan Riley Scott has a few big hits on his uh, Ball State tape as well. Uh, but you're also getting a guy that's really good in coverage. Uh, I believe he has 20 pass deflections in the past two seasons at Ball State, which for a, a for a safety, <laughs> that, that is an absurdly high number. Uh, I believe that uh, he had 12 in 2022, well, along with like 95 tackles. He was one of, he was the only player in the MAC to have over 70 tackles and 10 pass breakups in 2022, which by the way, and this is another topic for another day because I could go on a rant about all of the all of these kind of things. You have one player that has in your entire conference that has 70 tackles and and more than 10 pass breakups, and then you put him on the third team all <laughs> Mac. I mean, wh what are we doing there? Feels like he got punished <laughs> for uh, being uh, a member of uh, a bad Ball State team this year that only won four games. Uh so. He is a very productive player in the secondary. This season, I think he had 60-some tackles and eight pass deflections. Uh, he was first-team preseason All-Mac, uh, and then I believe he was honorable mention in uh, postseason. Uh, but he's a very productive player, fills a need. He's going to start at K-State probably right away, if I was to take a, uh, take, to take a guess. And it just adds another experienced guy in the secondary. And kind of like what I said with Strap Thomas, like you needed a player from the transfer portal uh, at safety because the numbers there, you probably like what you have in the younger classes. I like Colby McAllister and thought he's flashed. Jack Fabris was good enough to play in four games this season. And then Wesley Fair was good enough to get on the field a couple to, uh, for a couple games this year too. But you probably wanted another older body to come in and have a presence and be able to play because, you know, it's good to have good freshmen and good younger players, but if you can add experience, you're always going to do that. So to add a player from the transfer portal and then add a Juco safety, you kind of feel a lot better about what the safety room provides right now. And it's the first year where I think you're kind of going in, at least the first year and probably two or three, where going into the season, you're probably not very worried about what K-State has at safety because you have two starters back in Marquis Siegel and VJ Payne, and now you're bringing in a player that is uh, was an all Mac selection and provides some experience there. And you have Colby McAllister, who's proven depth, and you like your younger players. So it's the first year where I think that uh, we're not going to hear that safety is kind of a worry for Chris Kleiman. It's a good call because I feel like that is what I'm saying every year. It's like, eh, safety. I don't know. I don't know what's going to go on there. Uh, so this is a guy that not only did he, you know, obviously have a productive season this year, he's played in every single game at Ball State since yeah. he was a true freshman. So just one season left to play. How how will he kind of pencil in to the secondary? Is he going to take over that specific spot from Kobe Savage, or will they have to shuffle some of those guys at the safety position around again, like we saw them have to do early in this past season? Uh, I think Jordan Riley Scott might be it, might end up being the jack safety. Uh, he just, it seems like he can do a little bit of everything. And that's what you really need from the jack safety spot. Um, but it, I mean, you could also just shuffle people around. I mean, you, you want to get everybody playing in the spot that they're the most comfortable at. Um, but I think the, you'll, because you're going to be able to have all three guys come in. And I, you want to get VJ Payne, Marquis Siegel, and Jordan Riley Scott at their best position. 
Yeah, I think uh, I think this is a good pickup for Casey. And obviously, you know, there are schools and different coaching staffs where you can just, you know, give blind faith to what they do. Certainly, K-State's work at defensive back when it's come to the transfer portal has been impeccable. I mean, they have just nailed it, whether you look up and down and see that it's – I mean, how, how many transfer DBs have they put in the NFL now? Because that number has gone yeah. up a pretty significant amount because, I mean, think of a guy like Russ Yeast who came in. He's in the NFL right now. Obviously, Julius Brents, Josh Hayes made it this year. They've Ready done a great job. Just got signed by the Vikings, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, they've, they've done a great job with this. Yeah, and I'm not saying that Jordan Riley is going to be, you know, one of those guys and he's off to the NFL next year. But at the very least, I, I don't have any doubts about him being a productive and good player for K-State next season. Because that's the other thing, too, is all these guys that have transferred in in the secondary, it feels like they've made instant impacts when they're, they're on the field to start the season. Whether you look back at Kobe Savage in year one, I mean, I think, that first game, he just goes out there. It's Josh Hayes, same way. They were making mm-hmm. plays early against, like, Missouri, and that stood out. Um, this year, Marquis Siegel had some big hits early in the season, and he got better as things kind of progressed uh, after it was a little wobbly to start. I-, I think that this is just one of those spots where K-State obviously has an eye for it, and you think about the guys that are overseeing that. Obviously, Chris Kleiman, but then two guys that have been around a long time, and coach great players and Joe Klanerman and Van Malone, they've got a really good feel for what they're doing in the secondary when they're trying to bring in transfers. Oh, yeah. It's it's a big testament to uh, Joe Klanerman, Van Malone, and Chris Kleiman that they can do and that they can do this in the transfer portal. I mean, you, you said that you don't want to say uh, George Riley Scott will be an NFL guy, uh, but I, I don't think that either of us would be surprised if – if yeah, he ends up being an NFL draft pick at uh, later uh, after next season because of the pedigree that they've had. It's kind of how I feel about Marquise Siegel. I'm like, he got better as the season went along. I, I wouldn't be shocked if he's an NFL guy next year because they just keep turning out NFL dudes at safety, at safety specifically. I mean, mm-hmm. we, we just listed off Josh Hayes, Russ East, and now Reggie Stubblefield. And and that and that's just since the transfer portal really opened up the floodgates and started. Yeah, and then also like we can't forget other guys that number one, like another defensive transfer that came in and made it. Timmy Horn has been a productive player in the NFL the last two years now. And then guys that were already on the roster that they you know that they brought in, Echo Boydo is in there in the secondary. AJ Parker in the secondary has made it in the NFL. Another That's another one. guy that that was a transfer that they brought in in the secondary and has made it on an NFL roster. Like it, it, they know what they're doing when they get an older player coming in. And if you would have told me that Casey would kind of turn into like transfer DBU, I like four years ago, I don't know if I would have believed you because like it, it's just something that at Casey like you don't expect to happen. Yeah that they can just turn out guys to the NFL after one or two seasons and make it and make it like in the big time. I mean, Julius Brents was picked in the second round. Yeah, very true. Uh, Last thing for you, because we're talking transfer portal here. uh, What, what do you expect left out there for K state in the transfer portal world and what they might be looking at? Uh, So one player that I really have uh, my eyes on is Antonio Meeks, uh, Division two transfer actually from Tuskegee uh, University, which, by the way, I had never heard of before. Uh, I had came across Antonio Meeks's name. Uh, he's a bigger receiver. I think he's six two, six three. Competition level, obviously, probably not the best at the Division two level, but he averaged like I think it was twenty two yards a catch his uh, redshirt freshman season. And last year, he averaged like 17 yards a catch. So he's another kind of big play guy. Uh, Probably not, probably won't wow you with speed. But the one thing that really stood out to me was every ball that he caught, it seemed like it was a contested catch. And that's something that K-State's kind of lacked uh, in the past with receivers. And you want that big receiver that can just go up and essentially box out and out-rebound the guy. Uh, going for a, a catch in the end zone. Um, another 
this isn't like a real name because I don't have a name, but this is just a position that I know that they, it has to be addressed is at some point they're going to add a nose guard, uh, either from the transfer portal or uh, another Juco guy. Uh, we don't have names right now, but that that's just a position right now that needs a body. Yeah. And, and it's the one spot where I think that when you look at the whole class as a whole, kind of like I said on uh, our signing day show, where I would be tempted to give this uh, the 24 class an A if they if nose guard would have been addressed a little bit better because not having a high school one, not having a transfer one, not having a Juco guy, especially when you move Javon Banks out to D end really makes that room really thin. I think now they only have three scholarship players at nose guard, which is a little frightening considering that they had to use all three that they had this year at times last year or at times this year. Yeah, that's, that's a big deal. And I mean, we talked about it when we were discussing the addition of Malcolm Alcorn Crowder, he's a bigger guy, but he's kind of more so in the vein of probably being a bigger defensive end like Jalen pickle. And I mean, that's kind of essentially how Javon Banks ended up getting used this year. Cause I think initially the thought was last year that maybe he would feel, fill that role in the middle, but He's the size isn't really there for him to be uh, a typical nose guard, and he did some good work on the edge at points this year. So, certainly seems like a big deal. I mean, K State didn't land banks until I mean, we were into January last year. I think it was the day of the K State TCU basketball game in Fort Worth. So, there's plenty of time, uh, and that's why the portal will continue to be giving guys up because there's still 12 days left for guys to enter. January 2nd is the deadline. So, uh, K-State will be working the portal for uh, a long time to come still. And then, as you mentioned, like there was, what was it, a trio of Juco guys that got added like in May last yeah, year? Yeah, it was, uh, there was at least two, I want to say. Yeah, there were uh, there were like two or three, and they were on the same day back to back. I remember scrambling to uh, get stuff done uh, as I was at my brother's uh, graduation. So, yeah, I was like, oh, uh, better better get on this. So. That is uh, good stuff there to note on K-State and where they stand right now. But the uh, future roster is starting to come together for 2024. And one of the big additions now is the guy that probably going to be playing immediately in the secondary and Jordan Riley Scott, who had three productive seasons at Ball State. Now he tries to make the jump up a level. Really hasn't hurt K-State yet. And uh, they look to add another quality transfer DB. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Be sure to get all your K-State news and recruiting information over at kstateonline.com. Just got to head to On3. Uh, anything you want on the 2024 recruiting class, you can read up in the signature spotlights from Drew. You can get more videos like this over on our YouTube and also plenty of coverage in the uh, next week because we've got a lot of K-State basketball to hit on over the next 24, 48 hours as they get ready to face Wichita State. And we also have the Pop-Tarts Bowl to look forward to next week. So plenty of good coverage both on the website at On3 and also here on the YouTube. So stay locked in. And thanks for watching and listening to k